snack has played a, a huge part in my training camp. The protein, the, the ZMA, everything. The, the pre-workout has played such a major part in my training camp, keeping me healthy, keeping me recovered, keeping me feeling good, strong, and ready for my next workout. He's young, he's strong. Uh, I know he's worked his whole life for this moment. It's a big opportunity for him. He's got a lot of knockouts, he's got a big record, a lot of experience. Um, I've seen some of his stuff pretty fast, pretty explosive. Uh, but he just, he never fought nobody like me. You know what I'm he never fought nobody nowhere near like me. So. I'm gonna show them there's, there's levels to this, you know? This is something I've been doing my whole life at a very high level. And uh, when that bell rings, I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate myself. Why is it that heading into the Mike Lee fight, it was a little more like like verbal there, a little more, you were kind of dismissing them and then you went out there and did what you did. How come this fight is not like that? Uh, Cause he's smarter than Mike Lee. He knows not to get, get to know uh, riff rap with me. I don't matter. I don't like him just as much as I don't like Mike Lee. So I'm not, I don't care about being friends with nobody in my weight class. Uh, you didn't see Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran uh, being buddies. You didn't see them sitting with each other in fights, laughing and joking like you do nowadays. I don't like that. That's not, that's not me. That's not how I am. So I don't like Vincent. I don't like Mike. I don't like nobody in my division. So. In my weight class, that's just how it is. Well, now that you mentioned it, who do you think could wind up being your Duran? Your Sugar Ray Leonard? These other guys that'll give you the, the, the competition to make you great? Uh, well, I feel like the Super Middleweight division, it, it, it is hot right now. You know, probably the hottest it's been in a long while. Um, a lot of uh, good champions, one great champion. Um, you know, some, some guys that may be a little bit over the hill, but they can still really scrap and have good names and, you know, ex-world champions and, and young prospects on the way. Uh, so I feel like it's really wide open right now. Nobody, let's be realistic, nobody has, including myself, really had the opportunity to just take the reins of the shoot middleweight division and take complete control. You know, it's still up in the air for grabs, and um, but I plan on doing that here real soon. So. That comes down to you and Benavides eventually. Who, to, to really determine who's going to take the reins of the division. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And Canelo, you know, I think uh, Canelo he beats uh, Billy Joe Saunders and um, Callum Smith becomes unified. I beat David become unified, and then we get play for all the marbles. But first, you know, I take care of him first. But it kind of sounds like, like big picture wise. You do want Canelo, but that's the fight. Yeah. To get, is that true? Is that? I mean, he, I'm not chasing him. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, in a perfect world, it seems like that that's how it work out. You know, because we're not, I'm not, we're not gonna be able to face uh, Billy Joe or, or Callum. They're not, they're not mega stars. You know what I'm saying? For for there to be a cross network, cross promotion, it's gonna have to be two mega stars. And. You know, if Callum can't even, you know, get past John Ryder, you know, without a lucky decision in his hometown where his home crowd's booing him, you know, yeah, that's probably not gonna work out. And if Billy Joe, you know, with his uh, not looking so good against the American, maybe it was just a bad performance, everybody has those, but that's probably not gonna work out either, you know? So. In a, but in, in a if uh, you know these promotional problems, let's call them, weren't in the way, would you love to fight a Billy Joe or a Callum Smith? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not scared of nobody. I'm not scared of nobody. Are those, even though they're champions too, are those actually easier fights than, than a showdown with Benavides when you just watch these guys size them up? Or? Mm -hmm. 
don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, styles make fights. Um, but I feel like I'm the best Superman away. And I'm not just saying that, just blowing smoke, you know. I feel like everyone watching this and you yourself know that when I say that, that I really truly mean that deep in my heart. So, um, but it'll play out. The, the dust will settle. And when it does, uh, you're going to see me standing there. So. It, it sounds like, you know, correct me if I'm what you're kind of saying, I got to go through the gauntlet on, on my side, and Canelo's got to go. And, and then when I go through the gauntlet, I'll be I'll be a, the star that I need to be to bring them to the table to make a fight like that happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where, where, uh, first things first. I really don't even give a shit about those fights to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? All I care about is February 15th. So that's the only thing that matters. I'm not I'm not looking past nobody. I'm not looking for fights down the road. I don't care about anybody else in the world. I don't care about none of those fights. Um, All I care about is February 15th. None of that. Everything else we're talking about right now really don't even matter. So on February 15th versus Vincent, um, is there added pressure for you fighting in your home state, being in Tennessee and in front of your, your home crowd there? Uh, if there is, I don't feel it. Because, you know, I, I pushed to fight at home, I wanted to fight at home, but now I have that. So it's no reason for me to continue to focus on that or worry about that or want that or think about that because I had it. So now I just need to treat it like it's another fight in another venue in another city. And um, it don't matter if we was fighting in the venue, it don't matter if we were fighting here, it don't matter if we were fighting in the parking lot. None of that matters. All that matters is getting there and doing what I do best, which is fighting. Why do you think, you know, Zab Judah, Carlos Baldemir, why do you think guys have, had, have been spoiled by those huge upsets sometimes in their hometown? And it would, you know. Because they're not focused. You gotta focus on the task at hand. They get caught in. I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for another man, but you know, uh, if I'm speculating, you know, they could maybe get worried up in you know tickets for this person and that person and their friends and their family and and I don't know. Maybe maybe they had an easier fight uh, at home and you know they don't train as hard as they should. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't really speak on nobody else, but. I'm focused, I'm zoned in. I don't care about anything but February 15th, so. You, you mentioned that there's still some good guys, but they're old in the division. Like, the, the fight with Angulo was the original fight, but now it's 24-year-old. Are you happy that it got the opponent got changed? Uh, the, the, he was never locked in. He was never set in stone. Now, I kept trying to tell you guys, <laughs> I kept trying to tell everybody uh, that that fight's not set. I don't know why everybody's saying that. And Twitter. nobody wanted to believe me. Didn't I say that? I told you that. I told everybody that that it don't don't think that that's set in stone because it ain't. He's, his name is in the hat. Uh, and then they wanted to ask, was well, he the front runner? I said he's not the front runner. Nobody's the front runner, and nobody wanted to believe me. So then this is the one that you know he's my mandatory. If I don't fight my mandatory, then I get shipped to my belt. Me and David can't fight because he's already got a fight locked in with Yildirim. And he was, it was mandatory for him to fight Yildrim even before he fought Darrell. The winner of the Darrell fight and the Benavidez fight had to fight Yildrim. If it was Darrell, he had to fight Yildrim again because the first fight was so controversial. If David won, Yildrim got the automatic, you know, mandatory because the fight with Darrell was so close and controversial. So I can't get that fight. And this guy's my mandatory. He's ranked number three in the world. Number one and two are vacant. He's my mandatory. If I don't fight him, I get shook with my belt. So, what do you expect me to do? Everybody, all champions have mandatories. You win a belt, you get a voluntary or mandatory. So, but this dude is a live wire. He's been a w, uh, WBA interim champ. That's more than a lot of people that you do know. You know, these names that, these American guys, mm -hmm. that's a lot more. That's more than a lot of them have been WBA interim champ. And he's got a big record, a lot of experience. Uh, but like I said, he's going to fall short. So he, he's never faced nobody like me ever in his life. I'm going to show him that.